Gentlemen, welcome back to MGTOW Money. Today's topic, the number one investment of millionaires. Before we get to that, thanks to the ongoing support from the Patreon investors in this channel. Welcome Bruce, the newest member of the MGTOW Money Army of Patreon supporters of this channel. Men, see the video description today. Become a supporter of this channel. And thank you guys who bought me a cup of coffee via PayPal and Bitcoin on the last video. Guys, I really appreciate the respect you've shown me. On to today's topic, the number one investment of millionaires. So here's the scene. Okay, you're in your late 30s, early 40s. You've accumulated some capital and you're you're thinking about some various investment ideas. Or even you're in your early 20s and you're going to ignore some of the ideas that I've suggested about not buying any fixed physical assets in your hometown. For whatever reason, you've decided you are going to stay exactly where you are, regardless of your age, for the long term. I'm not talking about years. I'm talking about for decades. In other words, whatever community you're living in today, you're probably going to end up dying there, or at least within, let's say, 20, 30 kilometers, 50 miles of where you are right now. Fine. No problem. Most people across the world inevitably invest in Real estate and real estate has made more millionaires than any other investment that's known to mankind. And I'm not specifically talking about buying your personal residence. I'm specifically discussing buying investment real estate. And there are some rules, some ideas that I have for you. But before I get into some ideas, I specifically want to pop a myth. I want to remove a myth out there. Real estate investing is not a passive activity. This is not just like, oh, I'm going to buy a dividend paying stock or mutual fund or a real estate investment trust or REIT, or I'm just going to put my money in a bank or a CD and the money's just going to roll in and I, I can just sort of set it and forget get it. No, it is just the opposite, especially if you want to maximize your returns in investment real estate. You need to be an active person in your properties. You are actively going to have to take a hands-on role inevitably. And, and even though you might say, well, I'm a time. Well, guess what? If you want to invest in real estate and really make a lot of money doing it, you are going to have to take a serious role. You're going to have to spend 20, 30, even 40 hours a week, maybe, despite whatever hours you're working at your job, to do well with real estate. Specifically doing things like finding tenants, selling tenants on why they should rent from you, screening and filtering those tenants. In other words, deciding who is a good risk and who's not. Chasing tenants, inevitably, I can guarantee you, you're going to have to chase some people who are not paying the rent, who break their lease and move out. And furthermore, men get ready. You probably are going to have to end up suing people. Yeah, you're going to have to go to court and pay court fees, etc. Are you sort of getting a picture here, men? The point being is that you will be taking 2 a.m. phone calls regarding, hey, the plumbing just burst, or hey, the, a, a tree just slammed down on the roof, etc. The point is, don't be surprised if you choose to invest in real estate directly. You are going to have to, again, take an active role. It, it, you're not just going to be sitting on your sofa and just cashing those checks easily. Lastly, most importantly, speaking from my own experience, I can assure you, you inevitably are going to run across circumstances where after your tenants have moved out, your place is trashed. And guess what? Oh, well, I got a deposit from them. Yeah, that deposit's not going to cover all the walls they just knocked down and they just burned a hole in the floor, etc. Point is, men, I can't stress this enough. Forget the idea that the money is just going to roll in. All right, here, though, are three specific rules for you, leaving aside the myth that we've already corrected, rules that you need to take into account when you're looking at real estate. A quick word from today's sponsor. Men, you know, you've heard of Sprint, I presume, or how about Snap? You know, Snapchat, the application, or how about NVIDIA? You know, they make the computer chips. These companies are all publicly traded. In other words, they issue stock. I received 
free stock, just like you can, from Webull. Yeah, Webull gave me shares in Snap. They gave me shares in Sprint. They gave me shares in NVIDIA. They gave me shares in Zynga. These were free shares of stock that they gave me by referring people to open a free account with Webull. I have recommended to you, and I certainly would never do so unless I knew that it was totally legit. That is not a trick. It is not a scam. Let me qualify that. It's only for Americans, though. Americans can open a free account with Webull right now. Go to the video description right now and claim your free share of stock right now with Webull. Back on topic. There are three rules, as I mentioned, that you need to specifically think about when you're looking at real estate as an investment. Specifically, number one. This is a cliche. It's been around a long time, and there's a reason why it's been around a long time. Location, location, location. You can get just about everything else wrong when you make an investment real estate purchase as long as you get the location right. Getting this wrong, buying in the wrong location, increases the probability of your disaster, of you losing money highly. So the bottom line is, in simple terms, You want to buy in a good location. In other words, let me give you an example of what I define as a good location. You want to buy in an area where most of the people that are going to work are in a shirt and tie, where they drive nice cars, where the school district is good. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? In other words, you want to look for a specific area that meets those three criteria. Nice cars, People that are going to work during the day most of the time and they're wearing a shirt and tie and it's a good school district. These are fairly objective, observable things that you could do, that you could determine by driving around on a weekend, you can quickly choose an area. Now, as a corollary about choosing an area, I highly recommend choose an area not too far from where you're choosing to live. In other words, don't choose to buy investment real estate out of state. Don't even choose to buy it four or five hours away. Try to find investment real estate, let's say that's within 30 minutes to one hour driving time from where you live. One hour being the max. For example, I had a friend, they purchased an apartment building that was a good hour and a half one way from where they live. They had tremendous issues, not only just with that apartment building, but they were working full time and they had to spend, as you can just see here, three hours round trip just in drive time going out there and coming back and they had to go out there a lot. The bottom line is look for property ideally that's relatively close to you because as I was talking about with the miss, inevitably you're going to have to make frequent trips to that property. Now, next, nearly as important as the location is the price. The price you pay will seriously impact how much money, if any money, that you're going to ultimately make. If you're going to make any money on this property, it's going to be definitely reflected in the price you pay. If you pay too much, and I'm going to leave that undefined for just a second, but if you pay too much, you probably will make no money or even possibly lose money. Yes, people lose lots of money. I can, unfortunately, it didn't happen to me, but I can tell you, I know plenty of people that have lost lots of money over real estate, specifically when they bought, for example, at the height of the market from about 2004 to 2008. And I'm also thinking about people that might have bought in Sydney or Melbourne the past couple of years, in Australia, of course. I'm thinking about people that might might have bought in Western Canada over the past couple of years, etc., where real estate values are down 20 to 30 percent and are continuing to decline. The point being is that although real estate has made more millionaires, as I said, than anything else, it's also caused many, many bankruptcies. I know one person, for example, they purchased a property in a very good location and in a vacation area, for example, and it looked to be a very good investment. However, frankly, they way overpaid and that property dropped in value literally 50%, 5-0%. And furthermore, again, as a corollary relative to price, as so many investment properties 
are bought with leverage. In other words, with borrowed money. See the video in the past that I did. Go to the video to go to the video list that I did. I talked a lot about leverage, but specifically they had a high amount of leverage. In other words, they borrowed a high percentage of the purchase price and they ended up way underwater. In other words, the property, the money that they owed on the property was worth far less than what they could sell it for. And so they ended up having to short sell it and end up losing money on the property. So again, location, price, two critical components. Lastly, a critical error that many newbie real estate investors do frequently happens, especially in so-called hot markets where prices are really going up in value, you know, 15, 20% a year, that type of thing. They'll buy properties with negative cash flow. Let me define what I'm talking about here. I'm going to give a simple example, round numbers. You're looking at buying a $100,000 property and your total monthly cost for that property. And I emphasize the word total. We're talking, of course, your mortgage, your interest, your taxes, any fees, your assumed maintenance, etc. Let's hypothetically say is $1,000. You, however, can only expect to rent that property for $900 per month. So obviously, $1,000 minus $900 is $100. So in other words, you have negative cash flow of $100. The theory is though, although, quote, I'm coming out of pocket $100 a month, the theory is among many people in these, quote, hot markets where the prices are going up rapidly, is that, well, in two or three years, I can easily sell this profit sell this property for a profit. In other words, hey, this property, although I'm only paying $100,000 for it, and yeah, I got to come out $100 a month, I can sell it for $125,000, $130,000 easily in the next few years, thereby offsetting this 100 bucks a month. This is no big deal. And of course, hey, that sounds great in theory, doesn't it? Until it doesn't. The bottom line is, men, buying with negative cash flow is very, very risky. You're making a lot of serious assumptions that could easily go wrong, as we have seen in the past. This is not a theory that this can seriously go wrong on you. You could end up with issues with tenants. In other words, well, maybe it's not occupied all 12 months or 24 months or whatever time you're owning it. Furthermore, again, you're making a serious assumption that property values will continue and increase. Again, just like anything else, that is not a guarantee. A good rule of thumb when you're looking and evaluating property, investment property is, albeit hard to find today, I emphasize that, these types of deals right now are hard to find, is that you want to shoot for, write this down, a 12% gross return on your money. So again, simple math, a $100,000 investment generates a $1,000 a month. That's a gross return. In other words, before your expenses, before you've paid out anything, you're going to get a $1,000 a month in gross income. However, you can expect, again, rule of thumb, four to five percent of the purchase price is going to be need to be used on an annual basis for expenses. So again, Going back to that $100,000 purchase, you can expect budget for that $5,000 a year is a reasonable number is going to be need to use for various types of expenses, property taxes, a new roof, who knows, plumbing, etc. And it especially comes into play if you're not very handy. In other words, you're not able to do a lot of this work. And I know for a fact that four out of five of you are not going to be able to go out and replace the central air, AC, etc. if it should blow up. Let me finish by saying, men, real estate worldwide is the most popular investment. It's, of course, easy to understand. You don't have to read any books. You don't have to need any sort of classes or great education, etc. It's very easy in terms of, hey, I'm just going to buy this property and I'm just going to rent it out and the money's just going to roll in. That sounds great, doesn't it? However, it's decidedly simple, but it's deceit Hopefully simple. In other words, it's an illusionary simple. It's kind of like getting married. It can be very easy to get into, men, but tough to get out of. Gentlemen, as always, hit the like button if you found this profitable. John Galt, out.